social beings and our brains grow in a social environment. Good day everyone, let us discuss and give knowledge about personal society. What is personal society? A personal person or individual, their society encompasses a group of individuals living together, sharing common norms, values, and interacting with each other in a particular community. The connection between a person and society is integrated and dynamic. Individuals contribute to and are shaped by the society. They inhabit social norms, cultural values, and collective behaviors influence individuals while individuals in turn impact and contribute to the development and evolution of society through their actions, choices, and interaction with others. It's a reciprocal relationship where both individuals and society influence each other. Human beings are inherently social beings, seeking connection, companionship, and cooperation for emotional well-being and survival. Now, it's time to introduce to you what is the term human beings are social being means. Social interactions play a crucial role in shaping identity, sharing knowledge, and fostering a sense of belonging. Humans have evolved as social beings, and their ability to form and maintain social connections has been crucial for their survival and success as a species. Social interactions provide emotional support, reduce stress, and contribute to overall well-being. Emotionally, social interactions fulfill the human need for belonging and intimacy. Relationships with family, friends, and communities contribute to a sense of identity and purpose. Humans often seek validation, empathy, and shared experience through social connections. A Greek philosopher, Aristotle, believed that human beings are social and political beings by nature. This is not only driven by the need for survival, but also by their natural inclination to form groups as a means to realize their goal of living harmoniously with one another. In his politics, he discussed the human social formation from the smallest unit, which is the family, and a collection of which forms a village and then villages forming a larger group as a city or a polis. In Aristotle's view, human beings are not only social and political beings, they are also linguistic beings. According to Taylor, language is an essential part of human life and is constitutive of human experience. This means that language plays a role in how humans relate to each other and engage in different activities. Through language, humans can create different contexts and communicate with others through various roles. Our social lives are created and maintained through our use of language. Next is the need for cooperation and communion. It is not merely a survival instinct that binds us together, but a has for meaning in our existence. Humans, despite their fragility, possess remarkable capabilities, the capacity to love, care, respect, and more. These qualities find the true expression in communion with others. As communal beings, we forge values that elevate our shared experience. Charity, generosity, friendship, and love have become guiding principles enriching our lives and giving us reasons to thrive. Lastly, identity and narrativity. The search for self-understanding is not a solitary journey, but is one entwined with a relationship within various spheres, such as community, groups, school, or organization. Self-reflection alone cannot unveil the complexity of our identities. Charles Cooley's concept of the hourglass self echoes the idea that our perception of self is shaped not just by our thoughts, but also by the reflection of others. Our lives are interconnected, and the threads of our existence are interwoven with those around us. In understanding others, we gain a deeper understanding of ourselves. Levinas revolves around ethics and the relationship between the self and the others. 
According to Emmanuel Levinas, ethics is not about abstract principles or rules, but rather about our responsibility towards the other person. In this documentary, we explore two profound concepts of area and viewer sense. A journey of understanding. We delve into the essence of existence and the pure, innocent joy that life offers. At the core of our perception lies Ilya, the acknowledgement that things simply exist in the world. It's the basic act of saying, there is a tree, there is a rock. Join us as we contemplate the impersonal existence of the elements surrounding us. Give a sense, the unadulterated joy and pleasure experience without the burden of deep contemplation. Think of the simple delight in a beautiful sunset, or the sheer enjoyment of savoring your favorite dish, oblivious to any deeper meanings or moral considerations. Let's reflect on the beauty found in acknowledging the existence of the world, coupled with the genuine, unpretentious joy that life offers. In understanding Ilya and embracing Jewish sense, we find an harmonious balance that enriches our perception of the world. The context of Lebanon's philosophy scape refers to the tendency of comport, comport or detachment from their ethical towards other. It is the inclination to prioritize our own needs and desire over the needs and demands of the other. Lebanon's that escape can be a response to the constraints and expectation placed on us by society and culture. Other Lebanon's philosophy refers to any person and entity that is different from oneself. It could be another human being nature or even a divine presence. The other is seen as an entity that disrupts our self-centeredness, challenging us to acknowledge their existence and respond ethically to their needs and demands. The encounter with the other is considered a fundamental experience that shapes our ethical obligation and responsibilities towards them. Levinan suggests that our ethical relationship with the other is characterized by a sense of obligation and responsibilities that beyond our self-interest. Society refers to a group of people who exist in accordance with certain social structure and in the process. Create and maintain these structures for themselves. Niklas Laman According to Niklas Laman, a German sociologist known for his systems theory approach, his concept of society revolves around the idea that society is a complex system of interrelated and interconnected parts. Laman emphasized the importance of communication in society and how it serves as the basic units of social systems. John Rawls, a political philosopher, is renowned for his work on justice and political liberalism. His most influential work, A Theory of Justice. He proposes the concept of the original position and the veil of ignorance. Rawls aims to create a just society by ensuring that basic liberties are protected and social and economic inequalities are arranged to benefit the least advantaged. David Kapp is a philosopher who was focused on political philosophy and ethics. His works often explore foundations of political authorities and the moral principles underlying political institutions. Kapp has discussed topics such as political legitimacy, the justification of political authority, and the role of morality in political philosophy. Peter Sloterdijk describes the architectural and social situation in which humans are at once enclosed within spatial extension of themselves and in mediated relationships with larger, often weakly connected associations or collectives. Leon Mayhem, analytical definitions, usually treat a society as a relatively independent or self-sufficient population. Characterized by internal organization, territoriality, cultural distinctness, and sexual recruitment, 
as such it leaves out other aspects such as those of social psychological and economic perspectives among others forms of society refers to the different types or structures of societies that have been proposed and observed throughout history According to this approach, societies are distinguished according to technology, economic affairs, social stratification, and political structure. It is then essential to pay attention to some crucial moments when one society is transformed into another and the transition, which is an event in between in the new and the old, in order to see what type of markers there are to help us form a judgment regarding society's development and progress. Human civilization keeps on transitioning from one period to another. The historical and economic characterization of society does not amount to saying that such societies are no longer extant. Hunting and gathering plays a significant role in various forms of society, both in terms of individual development and societal structure. From a philosophical perspective, hunting and gathering represents a way of life that is deeply connected to nature and the environment. It requires a high degree of knowledge and understanding of the natural world as well as a strong sense of community and cooperation. In many indigenous cultures, hunting and gathering is not just a means of survival, but also a spiritual practice that is deeply tied to their beliefs and values. Hunting and gathering continues to play a vital role in many indigenous cultures in the Philippines, providing a means of subsistence, fostering social bonds and cooperation, promoting spirituality, and preserving a balance with the environment. Horticultural and pastoral are societies that represent changes in human development before the widespread adoption of more complex agricultural and industrial methods. In horticultural societies, people rely on cultivating plants for sustenance. They use basic tools for agriculture and cultivation of plants is a primary means of subsistence within the community. Pastoral societies are characterized by their reliance on herding and domesticating animals as a primary means of subsistence. These societies often lead a nomadic or semi-nomadic lifestyle, moving with their herds in search of suitable pasture and water source. Agricultural science is to study the relation between the human society and agriculture, environment, and foods. The horticultural age set the stage for a robust production of excess goods for trading and continued the trend during the agricultural age. The surplus of food production led to intensive economic activity within society and other societies. Many societies flourished and gained enormous power due to this. Agriculture has influenced the political and economic systems of the Philippines. The control of land and resources has been a source of power and wealth, leading to the emergence of hierarchical social structures and systems of governance. The Philippine government has implemented various policies and programs to support agriculture and farmers, recognizing the sector's importance to the country's economy and food security. Industrial societies are characterized by a shift from agrarian and manual labor to mechanized production and manufacturing. They rely heavily on technology and machinery for economic activities, and there's often a significant urbanization trend with people moving from rural areas to cities to work in factories and industries. This transition marks a significant advancement in production methods and is associated with increased complexity in social organization. Post-industrial refers to a society that has moved beyond the industrial stage of development. This type of society is characterized by a shift away from manufacturing and manual labor towards a more service-based economy with a greater emphasis on technology, information, and knowledge. 
This form of society marks a transition or transformation from industrial to what the French economic Daniel Cohen calls service society. There's so many people who pay attention to the connectivity of person and society. Some of our philosophers have different philosophical views about human being as social being. First, society and technology and its relationship with human beings. The Canadian philosopher Marshall McLuhan said that we shape technology, but at the same time, technology shapes us. It is discussing society and technology and its relationship with human beings. McLuhan's view is not quite far with what Heidegger observed. He said that technology is not just about control or power. With the widespread influence of technology or cybernetics, human beings have consciously or subconsciously adapted patterns of thinking that are technological or machinic, if you will. The machination of gestal and framing, according to Heidegger, is expressive of the omnipresent rational, technical scientific, and qualitative managerial control of all reality. Technology has a big relationship with human beings. How we conduct our activities online is unconsciously dictated or controlled by technological apparatuses that determine or control or predict what actions we tend to undertake. Everything is calculable and quantifiable because of technology. Human experiences and thoughts are reducible to simply algorithmic and calculations analysis. For instance, Social media platforms feed users with important information inferred by interpreting data from online activities. But on the other hand, users do not mind these feeds or ads since these are the things they want to see on their screens. Having the chance of doing calculative activity reduces the chance of thinking differently and critically. In a way, when we think society is an entity, it is not difficult to surmise how technology shapes society and how, in turn, society shapes human beings. Regarding institutions and powerful relations, this Deleuze makes a difference between the two in the field of philosophy. This is itself in perspective. Institutions are not only physical structures, but it also are powerful agents of certification and integration that have a lot of control over social network and multiplicities. The process of combining different components to create a unified whole out of multiplicities can be seen in the last concepts of integration. According to Deleuze and echoed by Lazzarato, institu institutions, fixed forces, and their relations into precise forms by them are a productive function. They serve as supports, giving the dynamic balance of power a reproductive role. Did you know what is ideological state apparatuses and repressive state apparatuses is? Yes, these apparatuses are mainly organized and secured to fulfill a specific goals and mainly controlled and dominated by powerful social classes. The French Marxist philosopher Louis Althusser distinguishes these two apparatuses. Ideological state apparatuses are institutions such as media, schools, and religion with diverse interests and goals. On the other hand, repressive state apparatuses, according to Althusser, the governments, courts, and armed forces, unlike the repressive state apparatuses, the ISA works according to specific interests that each institution identified as necessary to its interest. Social institutions like education, family, and government significantly impact various aspects of people's lives. Moreover, society is not an entity that has of its own members. Instead, the nature of society reflects the collective traits, values, and actions of its members. Society does shape us by providing structures, norms, and systems this statement asserts that individuals also play an active role in influencing and shaping society. Our beliefs, behaviors, and contributions collectively influence the development and evolution of our societal norms and structures. Thus, it's a mutual relationship where both society and individuals continuously influence and shape each other over time. As the Mexican-American philosopher Manuel de Landa calls organismic metaphor. Just as bodily organs work together for the organism as a whole, so the function of social institution is to work in harmony.
for the benefit of society. These social institutions are composed of human individuals, without which the establishment of such institutions is impossible. And borrowing the words of French political philosopher Alain de Benoist, man is capable of transforming society in the manner of a demurge, but solely within the preconditioned limits of the political, just as he transform himself, but only within the bounds of his natural predispositions. In summary, the relationship between individuals and society is fundamental for human flourishing. In summary, the dynamic tenetry or the strength of individual stopping remains of the collective, leading more cohesive and cardio social environment. The relationship between individuals and society is crucial for mutual growth and well-being. Individuals contribute to society through their skills and ideas. While society provides a framework to support identity and shared values. Striking a balance between personal development and societal harmony is essential for a flourishing community. Let us work together to create a better society where every person can live with dignity and respect.